All right. So should you get an a MBA after an engineering degree? Actually, I think that this is a really good question. And if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Massack. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship. And I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out. So I'm a chemical engineer. This is my undergrad from University of Waterloo. Um, and then I actually went and um, did a master's in, in, in it wasn't necessarily an MBA, but it was a master's of uh, management science. And then I did a PhD in strategy at the Ivy Business School. So, um, you know, should you actually do one of these old MBAs after an engineering degree? Um, I think that this is this is actually a really nice combination. You're going to see this a lot in terms of this combination of going from one professional degree to another, but having that sort of background actually really does add some value in the marketplace. And I don't think it does any harm. Um, I don't know of anybody that has done this that has been harmed in the making, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, what would I recommend for you in terms of where you're going and what you're um, thinking about? So what I would do is think about what of the engineering courses that you actually took or the undergrad courses that you actually took that you most resonated with in terms of the interests that you have or what you're currently doing right now, maybe you're 10 years out and you're thinking about what I really want to do in this world. And you sort of think about what it is that, that I like to do. So there's two ways that I think that are kind of useful ways of doing this. Or, you know, there's many different ways. But you, know, you can think about what you do in your work in environment that you just truly enjoy. But that's not always the easy thing to do. But what you can do is look to see at what you do on a regular basis. And so you can look at like your billing statements and um, you know what you actually do on a regular basis to discover like, hey, this is actually something that I wanna do. Or thinking about like, what do I really, really wanna get into? That's really hard to do. But thinking about sort of what you do right now that you enjoy and that you spend a lot of money on, um, that could be a nice course of action to think about what kind of MBA that you actually want to do, right? So to go in that particular direction, right? So if you like, um, you know, for example, you, you spend a lot of time reading Popular Mechanics. I don't even know if that magazine still exists anymore, but it was when I was a kid. Then you might want to think about, um, you know, product development and looking for programs that sort of emphasize product development. Um, if you're thinking about, you know, you spend a lot of time, you're an engineer, whatever, you know, and you spend a lot of time looking at, you know, design in terms of clothing design, look for programs that, that are going to emphasize the fact that you're going to be able to do that. If you love cooking, which a lot of people love to cook, um, look for programs that do really well in terms of emphasizing the you know, hospitality industry. Like I think Cornell has a really good program with sort of hospitality management. Um, you know, there's different things like that that you can look at that are going to leverage your current skills to get into a different area and um, are allowing you to become more fulfilled. That's basically at the end of the day is to think about how can I be more fulfilled with what I'm doing? And because um, I think that's probably why you're looking at this, right? You want to uh, not only move up, but I think moving up is kind of like a, eh. um, what you want to do is think about like, how can you be more fulfilled as a person and be more complete, um, you know, be as like as much as you as possible, right? You want to sort of leverage you so thinking about how you can leverage you, whatever that you looks like is, is the way to sort of think about this. So once you sort of discover like, hey, I'm kind of thinking about this, then you might want to list out, and, and I would encourage you to do this because nobody does this. Um, you know, I've asked many students, many of his students, many, many student eyes, um, many times, and nobody ever does this. I had one student once that, that has done this. And, and I think it's like the way that you should be doing this, right? You should treat it like the most biggest financial decision you've ever done in your life, because it is, it has the largest impact on what you're gonna do in your future. Nobody really re realizes that, but it does in terms of your education. So, you know, go an Excel spreadsheet. You guys, you folks like, love um, Excel. Right, you're gonna create the top best courses or top best programs um, that you want to go into, and then create some sort of criteria, three or three to five different criteria, and figure out if you can rank order those. And then once you sort of have that in mind, you kind of have an understanding of where you should go. So something I want to let you know 
Um, don't get focused on the geographic area. I think that is a mistake that I made. Um, two mistakes that I made. First one is, is I did not study enough for the GMAT. That was a total giant mistake. I studied for like two weeks or three weeks. That was a mistake. That I just took like the book, um, you know, read from the book and did the questions. Um, that's a mistake. What you should be doing is taking that course, spend the thousand bucks or wherever it is, you know, the Kaplan or whatever course there is, the Princeton Review, all that kind of stuff. To, I mean, take both of them. It's going to super help you, like massively help you. You would not believe how most institutions gravitate towards that GMAT score. They're going to tell you that it doesn't matter, but, you know, that's a lot, load of hogwash. All of those sort of rational type A kind of, you know, folks, they all gravitate towards business school. And so they count. I mean, everything's just counting. That's what it is. Business school is counting. Um, and so, you know, the GMAT score, if you get higher, it's going to matter a lot. So look at that. Um, and then the other thing is thinking about geographic region. I know some of you might feel like you're, you're constrained, but really wandering outside for a year or two of your region that you feel comfortable with. You know, there's great programs all around the world that, that are universally recognized as amazing programs. INSEAD, um, you know, if you're in North America, going to INSEAD in Singapore and France is really good. Um, Australian business school is really good, right? Like those are well recognized. You go to them, nobody's ever going to be like, why'd you do that, right? Um, so actually, I'm, I'm going to take a step back. So if you're in um, America has, that, uh, you know, America tends to be a little bit more self-focused and they reward schools a lot more from, from, from America. Um, but you know, if you did an American institution, went to an American institution, um, that's well recognized around the world. And so you could look at that, right? So, and, but if it's on the West coast or East coast or wherever, and it's far away, um, you know, venture, I would highly recommend that you venture into those areas and think about it. Right. And then once you do that, um, you know, you pick your, your best ones, apply to as, as many as you can, right? Like spend that money. Um, I know it seems painful. It's going to benefit you in the long run. Spend that money to apply as many places as you can. Um, investigate the different career paths as you're doing that and figure out where they're going and what they're doing. Um, it's going to really help you. And I think it's going to be useful for you to do that. So what I'm saying is, um, you know, there's something that happens. There's this problem in computer science and it's used in business and strategy and stuff. Um, what you don't want to do is sort of narrow down too quickly on a problem solution, what you want to do is sort of um, look very broadly at the beginning and, and search as broadly as can, as you possible and then narrow down as you go. So thinking about, you know, where am I going to be in 10 years, right? Like if I if I have this highfalutin degree from some highfalutin place, I can always come back and, um, you know, work on, on what I'm doing and do really good things. And, and it's going to help you actually by doing that. Um, to do those things. So with that, give me a thumbs up to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah. So, you know, um, doing an MBA after an engineering degree, I think it's a good combination. I don't think it, and uh, most people are going to be, most people probably don't regret it. Um, as far as I know, I, I, I don't think most people are going to regret it. It's a little tough, but um, it's going to benefit you, I think. Financially, Definitely financially, definitely in terms of career fulfillment and all those kind of things. Um, there's, It's a good combination. It works. All right. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.